20, uh, 34, you will find that a lot of people go to heaven way before they're supposed to because they did not discern the Lord's body in a worthily manner. And the Bible says, because they would not judge their own self in their judge, but that they would not be condemned with the world and the devil. So they make it to heaven. You hear what I'm saying? They make it to heaven because salvation is of faith, but not of works. But if you want to get healed, you've got to do the obedience part. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. But the consequences of unforgiveness may bind you to a disease resulting from, resulting from the sin of bitterness and unforgiveness. Christians, for the most part, believe we are saved by grace and by faith. But just because you are born again and your spirit has become alive in God, it does not mean that you have resolved the consequences of the sin issue in your life. Otherwise, we would not need sanctification. See, when we look up here at the Star of David, that's why this church has that as a logo. The big giant triangle pointing down and the other one across it forms little triangles around the outside. The very bottom one is justification. That's what God, through Christ Jesus, does for us that we can't do for ourselves. We have to accept it by faith. And then the next one up on the top right is sanctification. We cannot escape it. And the one on the top left over there is perfection. We can't make ourselves perfect. Jesus Christ does that when we accept all that He did for us on the cross. That means we're justified, we're sanctified unto God's use and purposes, and we are made perfect in Him. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yet here we are down here in the physical you will have sickness and disease. There's a difference between salvation and us enjoying the blessings of God. Yes. Oh, yes. Homework. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 29. You're going to find out about all the curses and all the sicknesses and all the diseases and all the blessings too. Because God loves to bless people. Yes, He does. But let me tell you, you slide over into sin, and you're going to pay the consequences. And it's not going to be fun. And you may walk your entire life in the result of something that happened way back in your life, and you're still suffering from it today. All right. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 14, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of the children of God. Fear, fear, did you know that fear is sin? Yes. Fear is sin because yes. fear is believing the lie of the devil yes. instead of the comfort and blessing and protection of Almighty God. How would you do with your child? Would you protect your child? Yes, you do. Yes. And God will us too if we'll trust Him and believe Him and thank you for it. He absolutely will. Fear is sin. Fear is the number one plague of America. It's the number one plague of the world. Fear of tomorrow, fear of death, fear of man, fear of dying, fear of disease, fear of mother laws. <laughs> fear, fear of father laws too. Fear of your neighbor, fear of yourself. He's given a whole list of it. We are a people who are in bondage. We're paying an incredibly high price. God's people are sent back into the world for help when the answer to setting them free is waiting in His Word. I am more interested in getting you into a better life, not just getting you into heaven. The Lord's Prayer says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then if we read in 3 John verse 2, it was over for me. He said, when I read it, Beloved, I wish that above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Amen. Isn't that good? Yes. God's perfect will is to heal you. And God's is not to just to heal you. Excuse me, I said it backwards. God's perfect will is not to have to heal you all the time. God's perfect will is that you walk in hell. Amen. And Amen. don't get sick. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Guess what happened to the five ladies? Every 
every single one of them, when they admitted and confessed their sin, he said, okay, now I'll pray for you. And guess what? Every single one of them got healed. Got healed. All those gnarly things and stuff with their bodies became healed. It works, ladies and gentlemen. It, the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 14, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Those five ladies got healed when they all admitted and forgave those that hurt them. God said, Jesus said, if we will not forgive, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us our sins, our trespasses. Now, the children suffer because of the sins of the parents. After my children were grown, my youngest became an adult, one day we were all together. And of course, I had my years and years and years of being in rebellion against God. But one day when they were all together, I addressed all of them, and I repented to my children. I said, I made a lot of mistakes with you. Now, I tried to teach you the right ways and the right things, to teach you to work, to not be a leech or a parasite. Uh, but to work. The Bible says a man that don't work is not supposed to eat. We've got a whole world of people out here that's wanting to be on the dole. No. God wants us to work and to work for His kingdom also. And He wants us to forgive everybody that does bad things to us. And the world is full of that. While we're living in this world, it's going to happen. It may happen this afternoon. It may happen any time. People that on the job, wherever you go, there's offense everywhere. Yeah. Isn't that right? Not yeah. in here. Yes, it is. Yeah, there's offense everywhere. But you got to forgive them. Because it comes right back on you, right back on me. We have to forgive them so that we can walk in the times and places where stuff attacks ourselves. We come right back against it. By His stripes, I am healed. And I thank the Lord. I said, Lord, you always heal me. I'm not exempt from things happening. None of us are. But thank God, I can thank God for His healing power that when He shows me something, I'll shift it. Do that. Admit that. Confess that before me. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And when I do, guess what? I'm healed. And I've had it happen this week. This week when I suffered some of the most intense pain I've had in my entire life. And I've been, I flipped a motorcycle and it fell on me and crushed my face and skull. And uh, I'm alright. <laughs> no, I am. But I had something happen to me. And I trusted in God. And I repented for what I had said and done ignorantly. You know, I'm still walking the walk. I'm being honest and transparent to you. And when I did, guess what? I got healed and the pain just. Right. And went right away, just like that. I'm supposed to know that. But, I still got this stuff to deal with. It's called the flesh. The flesh will get you in trouble. Oh, yes, it will. The flesh will get you in trouble. But by His stripes, I am here. And I thank you. I say, Lord, you always heal. Every single time I obey, I get healed. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Amen. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm when the pain just goes. Yeah. I mean, it's better than morphine. Yeah. I've been on morphine before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, morphine will just take you and just float you right off on the cloud, you know, yeah. like that. And yeah. yeah. you had screaming pain. Anybody have been there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. You had screaming pain. But God's better than that. God's better than morphine. God's better than drugs. 
Yes. God's a good God. Thanks. You may be here this morning with different kinds of circumstances and situations and things going on that you can't seem to get a handle on. I venture to say it may be something you bury. Something you bury. We do that to protect ourselves. Yes, we do. We do. Because it hurts too bad. Emotional pain is terrible. They say that 90% of all diseases, and this is the medical word, is psychosomatic. Well, there's a spiritual root behind that sickness, that problem, that whatever's going on. And all Mr. Wright, Henry W. Wright, Pastor Wright is doing, is dis has discovered it. And the front of this book is full of pages of doctors. And you can see here on the back these great pages here. There's probably a hundred, well, I don't know if it's a full hundred pages. It's nothing but testimony and testimony and testimony. Incurable cancer eradicated. This MS, uh, all these diseases, all these are testimonies of people still, God still doing miracles. Uh, chronic fatigue, bipolar, pain-free, thyroid cancer, gallbladder cancer, all kinds of diseases and things. You want to check the book out? Get in touch with Janice. What does it do? It tells us where we see it. That's basically what all this book is about. It's where we let sin hurt us and then we won't forgive. We won't let it go. We won't obey God. I asked you this before and I'll ask you again. How long was the man beside the pool of Bethesda? 38 years. And what did Jesus tell him after he saw him later? Go and sin no more lest Worst come upon you. And how many of us have gone right ahead and sinned again and got worse? And we go, oh God, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest with you, folks. This, is, this book tells us how to get it. All he's doing is just bringing it out in a forefront in a way that opens it up to people. So that we can say, yeah, I, I did do that. I did. I did. Lord, I get down on my knees and I repent. And I forgive so and so. Stand here. I'm going to do something with you. <laughs>